Good evening, children. Welcome to online class. Tenth standard first language English. We are going to learn today fourth poem, Lock in Bar, written by Sir Walter Scott. Sir Walter Scott. You know about him. His lifetime is seventeen seventy one to eighteen thirty two. He was an excellent storyteller, both in prose and in verse. In this popular ballad, he tells us how, in olden days, brave young men in Scotland possessed the necessary dash and pluck to do extraordinary things. His narrative poems fascinate the reader by the gripping action, stirring measure. And the imaginative appeal. Now, coming to the poem. Oh, young Lockinver is come out of the west. Through all the wide border, his steed was the best. And save his good broad sword, he weapons had none. He rode all unarmed, and he rode all alone. So faithful in love, and so dauntless in war, there never was knight like the young Lochinver. This beautiful six lines, telling about Lochinver only. Who is Lochinver? Lochinver is. A brave young knight who sets out from Scotland to Netherby Hall, where the wedding of his beloved Ellen is about to take place. So, border is the place between Scotland and England. He has the best horse in the country, and is faithful in love, fearless in war, and except his broad sword, the weapon. He has no other weapon except his broad sword. The only weapon he is having is only broad sword. He rode all unarmed. He had no weapons, and I. Dauntless and a matchless among knights, there never was knight like the young Lockinver. So that is unarmed, alone, then the riding, then coming towards the Netherby Hall. That is no one was like him before. That is matchless among knights. So that is the bravery. That is the character of Lockinver. First six lines telling about the character. Second uh, six lines. He said uh, not for break. He stayed not for break and he stopped not for stone. He swam the S.K. River where ford there was none, but here he alighted at the Netherby Gate. The bride had consented. The gallant came late. But a laggard in love and a dastard in war was to wait the fair Ellen of brave Lockinver. He does not stay for a break or stop for a stone or any obstacle on the way, and swims across the river SK. At a place, there are no shallow parts which can be crossed easily. But here, however, he arrives late at a Netherby gate. He alighted that is got down at a Netherby gate. Since the bride has already given her consent, she is being given in marriage. That is, who is described as a laggard in love and a dastard in a war. That is, she was about to 
but there is fair Ellen. The lady love of a brave Lockinver was is uh, being given in marriage to Lagard. She boldly, this is a third para. So boldly he entered the Netherby Hall. Among bridesmen and the kinsmen, the brothers and all. Then spoke the bride's father, his hand on his word. For the poor craven bridegroom said never a word. Oh, come. Ye in peace here or come ye in war, or to dance at our bridal young lord, Lockinver. So, when Lockinver boldly breaks into the Netherby Hall, unannounced, unannounced, and there are uh, bridesmen, there's kinsmen, brothers, uh, among the guests at the bridal. It's a wedding. Then immediately on seeing Lockinver, uh, that is bride's father, Ellen's father, then uh, that is uh, keeping his hand on the sword in defense. And uh, he asked if he has, he asked him if he has come in peace or war to wage a war or to dance at the bridal feast. He's asking young Lord Lackinder. I long wooed your daughter. My suit you denied. Love swells like the Solway, but ebbs like its tide. Now am I come with this lost love of mine? To lead but one measure, drink one cup of wine. There are maidens in Scotland more lovely by far that would gladly be bride to the young Lockinder. So Lockinder said, he quickly states, yes, sir, long that is who loved Ellen, but since his suit was denied, that his love has been denied. His love has died like a falling tide of Solve. Hence, uh, he has come with his uh, lost love, that is to drink, to dance, and one measure to, and, uh, to drink one cup of wine. He even boasts that there are many lovely ladies, maidens, in Scotland, very glad to be his bride to that is young Lockinver. The bride kissed the goblet. The knight took it up. He quaffed off the wine and he threw down the cup. She looked down to blush and she looked up to sigh with a smile on her lips and a tear in her eye. He took her soft hand, ere her mother could bar. Now trade, be a measure, said young Lockinver. So Ellen, on hearing this, she kissed a goblet of wine and uh, offers it to Lockinver to drink. She looks down at him and blesses and sighs, looking at him, and she smiles at him with a tear in her eyes. However, he reassures her his love to her and he takes her soft hand and says that they shall treat a measure, that is dancing for a while. So stately his form and so lovely her face that never a hall such a galliard did grace, while her mother did fret and her father did fume, and the bridegroom stood dangling his bonnet and plume, and the bride maidens whispered, it were better by far 
to have matched our fair cousin with the young lucky bird. As they danced, the stateliness of his form and the loveliness of her face impressed the guests. They feel that Netherby uh, Hall is lucky to have witnessed such a graceful dance and also pair, beautiful pair. The Ellen's mother, she gets angry, even uh, her father also fumes. And the bridegroom stands helplessly, dangling his uh, bonnet and a uh, plume. The bride maidens, they whisper that it would be better, it would have been much better to have matched their Ellen with the young Lockinbar. One touch to her hand and one word in her ear. When they reached the hall door, the charger stood near. So light to the croup, the fair lady he swung. So light to the saddle before her he sprung. And she is one, they are gone over bank, bush and the scar. And they will have fleet steeds that follow. What young Lockinver. So how is it? During the dance, as Lockinver and Ellen reach the hall door, he touches her hand and whispers something into her ear. He swings faster. He swings faster, Ellen, and then himself onto his horseback and rides away swiftly, triumphantly, exulting, she is one. We are gone. There was a mounting among the Grammys of the near Netherby clan, Fosters, Fenwicks and the Musgraves, they rode and they ran. There was a racing and a chasing on a canopy lee. But the last bride of Netherby, they never did they see. So daring in love and so dauntless in war, how he ever heard of gallant like young Lockinver. As Lockinver skillfully abducts Ellen, the members of the Netherby clan, then mount on their horse and chase them. That is, who are they? Netherby clan, Forsters, Fenwicks, and the Musgraves. They rode and they ran. That is the race and chased them, but there was a racing and chasing on a cannibally. That's a place. And, um, but their efforts uh, go futile. They never managed to see their lost brain again. So this is the story of a lock in birth. How beautifully then he has uh, explained. This very nice story to read also. So there are the so this is the Nidrabai Hall, this old one, and this is how he is uh, abducting her. This also, that is what, that is Nidrabai Hall they are showing, and this is the where the marriage is taking place. Okay, children.